Yeah, good night, Bishop. All good to go. Ready? Yeah. Well, good night, everybody. What a joy it is to join you tonight. Our host is otherwise occupied or she would be here, but uh, I am the stand-in guy. To God be the glory. Let's look to God in prayer. As we thank him tonight, we're going to turn to Job chapter number 33. Job chapter 33. And reading from verse number 14. Father, we thank you tonight. Forever, O oh Lord, your words are settled in heaven. There's not going to be an alteration. There's not going to be a change in it. It is what it is. You have said what you have said. Your word is forever settled in heaven. It is living, active, quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts, the motives, and the intentions of the heart. Give us an understanding heart, we pray, and cause us to grasp what you're saying to us in this season, at this moment in time. In Yeshua's mighty name, we have prayed. And all of God's children say amen and amen. Amen. It is always a joy to have you join us uh, on the Zoom. And some of you will get it in other, in other ways. Studying, going into the word of God, learning something, edifying ourselves, building up ourselves in the most holy faith. This is Dominion Ministries, New York. And the leader there is Apostle Von der Gaspar. As I said in the opening statements, she is unavailable tonight, called away to high duties. And therefore I have decided, and we agreed that I should be the voice speaking to the people of God everywhere that you are at. I have started a series on the subject of dreams. And tonight we are going to talk about dream categorization, the categories of dreams. We are breaking it down like a fraction because we want to gain insight. We want to gain understanding. We do not want to be like those who are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. And so we seek to find subject areas that affect us on a regular basis. And yet we have no biblical understanding or very little biblical insight on the subject matter. Hosea chapter four and six in the scripture says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And then he tells you why, because they have rejected knowledge. I also will reject your children. The rejection of knowledge has negative generational impact. It impacts our children. They end up rejected by God because their parents rejected knowledge. And so there was no knowledge for us to pass on because we rejected it. But we are not the ones that reject knowledge. We want to know. The people that know their God, the Bible says, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. I and the children that you have given me are for signs and wonders and miracles. And that's what we believe. And so that's the reason why we get into the study. That's why we do some things one time, two times, three times, 10 times. We go over it over and over until we begin to get a semblance of understanding. We have never exhausted any subject because the Bible is an inexhaustible book. The more you read it and learn, the more you know there is so much more to learn. So let's go to Job, the 33rd chapter, Job 33, and be reading from verse 14 to verse number 18. Job 33, verses 14, following down to verse number 18. Here I go. For God speaketh once, God 
speak at once. Yea, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not. Yet man does not understand. Does not understand what? He does not understand what he's hearing. He does not understand God is speaking. He does not understand what's happening to him when he gets up. Look at verse 15. How does God speak? Once and twice. In a dream. God is doing what? Speaking. When? In a dream. You mean God speaks to me when I'm, when I'm in my sleep dreaming? Yes. In a dream. In a vision of the night. You see things in the night while you're fast asleep. When deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, while they're in a deep sleep, they're given dreams, and in the dream, once and twice, God is speaking to them, even though they don't understand. So we get another point here, number one. God speaks once or twice. Number two, even though God speaks once and twice, men do not understand. Number three, in a dream, God can speak. Number four, men can get up from a dream knowing that God has spoken and not have understanding. It's not that God is speaking French or Greek. He's speaking in their language. And yet they don't understand it. Why? Because they are in their dream state. Let's read on. Then he opened the ears of men. This is God. While they're asleep, he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions. So dreams bring with them instruction. And God is sealing up, locking it in them. Instruction. Have you ever gotten up one day and said to yourself, I feel like doing this and that? It wasn't in your mind when you went to bed. But when you got up, you just felt like going to a certain place. You just felt like calling a certain person. You just felt like moving and going and do this or that. And what you did not know was that it was God who gave you the instruction to get cracking on that particular subject matter because he has something to show you. Then he opened up the ears of men while they're sleeping, verse 16 of Job 33 and seals up their instructions that he may withdraw man from his purpose. There is something that man has planned to do and God is using the dream to change his mind that he would stop rushing ahead in doing this thing and hide pride from man. Through the dream, man is shown that he is moving in a haughty manner and that he needs to humble himself. Look at verse 18. He, that is God, keepeth back his soul, the soul of man, from the pit. Whenever there's a pit, it means that a hunter, a fowler, a trapper is on the prowl. He has dug his pit. He has set his spikes, his traps. He has camouflaged it with grass and shrubs and tree branches, etc., so that it looks like regular terrain. But he's out to hunt either a wild animal or some meat. And whatever drops in there is going to be caught, wounded, and he will finish it off. So God is saying, I'm going to use the dream to warn man of his pride. To warn man of his path. And to let him know when someone has plotted and planned to set him up to put him in trouble, to get him badly wounded or dead. And God warns in a dream because he heard what that person was saying, how they were going to trap you and put an end to your life and stick a knife in your liver. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the soul. He protects him from certain death, certain calamity. A dream is sent to protect you from certain death, from certain calamity. 
And so we are on the prowl talking about dreams. And in tonight's class, in tonight's discourse, I'm talking about dream categorization, categories of dreams. You set them in different sections. You're, you're breaking it down like a fraction now so that more understanding can be gleaned and that God's people can become proficient at deciphering the mystery of dreams. That when they awake the next day, they would have remembered what the dream was. They would have written it down. They would have used the biblical law of first mention. They would have seen the shades and colors that were in the dream. And they would know what their role was. And how they need to conduct themselves to align themselves to get the benefits and blessings and to follow the instruction that the dream came to give them. And so I'm going to begin with the first category, dreams of self-disclosure. Dreams of self-disclosure. The dream language is the language that is spoken by God. He is the dream giver. We are the dream receivers. He is the dream master. We are the dream protege. He is a dream mentor. We are the dream mentees. So the dream language is about God. And yet, most of our dreams is about us. Not only is it about us, but it is about strategies to help us in our walk as we live this life. Dreams come to bring assistance to help us to walk with more success in life. They are sent by God, but they are for us. And they are to disclose to us what our next move is, what our next moves are. They are to disclose to us what to avoid, and what to bring into your space.com. They are to disclose to us the season of life that we're in, when to take a chance and when to not move an inch because danger is in front of you. Dreams of self disclosure. Number two, dreams of outside things outside people, outside nations, and outside events. Outside of what? Outside of you, meaning you are not the focus of the dream. The dream is not all about you or mostly about you. This kind of dream of outside things has very little to do with you. You are a mere spectator, but these outside things come to you because there's a lesson in it for you. Dreams of outside things, they are sent by God, and this is what they are sent to do. Get your pen and write. This is a time to write. Write this down. Dreams of outside things, one. Dreams of outside people in foreign countries, two. Dreams of outside nations, three. Dreams of outside events, outside events. Four, but you are viewing the dream in your deep sleep. Why does God send those dreams? I am answering why. Number one, they are sent to widen your horizon, widen your clout, to widen your sphere of influence to widen your space.com, widen your reach. That's number one. They are sent, number two, to train and to teach you. They are sent to train and to teach you. Teach you what? About new things, about new peoples, about new nations, and about new events. So your mind will be stretched like a rubber band 
There are some rubber bands, after you have stretched them, they don't ever go back to that size that they were. They, they were a little bigger because the elasticity has been so stretched, it cannot return to its prior size. Dreams are sent to stretch your brain, to stretch your spirit man, to stretch your appetite, to stretch your IQ, to stretch your grasp, to stretch your intelligence. And once you have been stretched, you can never go back to being who you were. Some sentences, some songs, some movies, meeting with some people can have such an impact and such an effect on you that you can never, ever, ever go back to being who you were. So dreams are sent to widen your cloud, widen your horizon. Number two, to train you and to teach you. Number three, to enhance your dream vocabulary. Vocabulary has to do with words. It has to do with uh, broadening your IQ, your intelligence quotient, stretching your mental faculty, pulling your brain, elasticizing your medulla oblongata, stretching you out so that you can go back to being who you were, to enhance your dream vocabulary. Why? Because when you see outside things, you now have an inside and an outside revelation. Anybody who has traveled from their country to another country, they can never see life the same way that their other countrymen who have never gone anywhere have seen life. And there is that travel envy. People know that you are a better version of yourself because you have traveled and have seen this, that, and the other. So your vocabulary has been widened. Why are outside dreams sent? Number four, they are sent to enlarge your appetite. <laughs> now that you've eaten Trinidadian doubles, you know that roti and curry is not the only thing you can eat. There is something out there called double. Now that you've eaten the Guyanese polori, you know that doubles is not the only thing out there, but there is polori. Now that you, you see what I'm saying? I don't want to go on. They increase your appetite. My mother used to tell us very often, she said, we have not seen all of our mother's children yet. I thought, what, how many children does she have? I only know the five of us. <laughs> but I know what she was talking about now. She was saying the life that you live is not the only life there is. There are people that live and they are alive, but they live a different life than the one you live. Your way is not the only way. And some people are forever in this small cocoon and they are forever a caterpillar because they can't stretch to become a butterfly because they assume, and it's a false assumption, that their way is the only way. Their people are the brightest people, the smartest people, the only people who know about money, the only people who know about administration, the only people who can run the business, run the country, run the this, run the that. And they go, they, they, they shut everybody out. We are the only ones that can get this done. You have not seen all your mother's children. So dreams are sent to enlarge your appetite. Glory be to God. They are sent, number five, to inspire us to press ahead. Dreams are sent to inspire us, to fire us up, and to tell us to keep going, keep going. Come on, keep going, keep going. Press ahead. Don't go back. Don't go back. Don't be Lot's wife now. Don't become a pillar of salt. Press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Number six, dreams are sent. To lead us into deeper intercession. Dreams are sent to lead us into deeper intercession. In the dream, deep God is calling unto deep you, taking you into deeper depths. 
And it is when the difficult dreams come, it is when the mysterious dreams come, it is when the dreams that are hard to understand come, mysterion, mystery. It's like a puzzle. You know all the parts are there, but you don't know what the end result will be. They haven't shown you any picture of what this puzzle is supposed to look like when you put all the pieces together. And there are many moving parts. And so you go to God, the dream giver, because he's also not only the dream giver, but the dream interpreter. And you don't dilly and dally in prayer. You go straight for the juggler. And you know he has an answer because he has said, what is done in darkness will come to light. It was dark when you fell asleep. It was dark when you got into REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. It was dark when you, when you turned the lights on. And now you're face to face with this dream that you remember, but you have no idea what it really means. And so what the dream has done, you understand that it was sent to lead you into deeper intercession. Not that your intercession wasn't deep. It was deep before, but this one has so many angles to it, so many colors to it, so many oceans and valleys to it, so many rifts and ripples to it, that you know it's going to take some time with God and you're willing to go deeper in your intercession. Oh, glory to God. Number seven, outside dreams. These dreams are sent to show you what lies ahead. To show you what lies ahead. They are dreams that have a prophetic edge to them. A futuristic view about them. A futuristic outlook. They are showing you 2025. 2030, 2024, and they're showing it to you in September of 2023. And you don't know what you saw. You tell people what you saw. They look at you like you're an alien, extraterrestrial, ET phone home. They look at you with that puzzled look and they look at each other and they grin, that knowing, mocking, scoffing grin. Just because somebody else did not get the dream does not mean your dream is not valid. Stop going to people for vindication and validation. They were not in the dream. They were not there. You were there. It was not sent to them. It was sent to you. So you are the one that has to decide whether you will take it and unravel its mystery or rubbish it and toss it aside. Dreams are sent to show what lies ahead the bible says that the holy spirit he will show us things to come i don't get these believers who when people see something that is to come they get their panties in a bunch and they get all nervous and uptight and they say oh that's the devil that's satan trying to fool you about something these people are so devil conscious that everything that happens they blame the devil as if he had all of that power. Dreams are sent to show you the future. The angel told Joseph, this mo mother here, she's pregnant with a boy. He was showing him the future. You shall call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sin. It was showing him the future. Isaiah said, a virgin shall conceive. He was telling them the future. Can human beings see the future? Yes. Can human beings know the future? Yes. And many times God reveals things that are going to happen in a dream. If I'm going to be stopped by a police tomorrow or sometime this week, I always see it in a dream. So I am more aware and cautious as I use the roads. 
uh, on two occasions. I remember the dream, but decided to give it, give it a test to see. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Dreams are sent to show you what lies ahead. Don't you want to know what lies ahead? Oh, yes. Dreams are sent to show you what lies ahead. Uh, number sent to call us to come up higher. To call us to come up higher. Raise the bar. Raise your level. Raise your stuff. Bring that conversation up. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Dress better. Groom your nails and your toes. Go get yourself a facial. Get your hair done better than you have it done right now. You look raggedy and tore up. Come up higher in your conversation. Quit with the complaining, murmuring, whining, and, and moaning all the time. Every time we see you, you got bad news and something else went wrong. You're like sad sack. We're tired of you. We don't want to hear that low-level conversation. There are times people come and they're talking to me and I say to them, bring that conversation up. They say, what are you talking about? And then they start talking again. I said, bring that conversation up. And they say, oh, 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 oh. oh all right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and I laugh, they laugh, and they bring the conversation up. And anytime they start to go that, some people are so accustomed to talking negative that if you don't challenge them, their conversation will always be at the low level. Come up higher, said the spirit of the Lord. Come up higher, be obedient to your word. Come up high, come up higher. Challenge your friends and family and food to come up higher. Yes. Dreams are sent to motivate to greater growth. To motivate us to greater growth. Dreams are sent, number 10, to inspire us to meet our fullest potential. Joseph was just going to be comfortable marrying Mary and living happily ever after. But the Lord told him, look, you're going to have a stepchild. You're going to need to bring him up in the fear of the Lord. You are more than a mere carpenter. You will be the steward of the king of kings and lord of lords. He will stay with you for 30 years plus, And then he'll move off on his own in this ministry. He's going to die a very terrible death. I want you to prepare him. Teams are sent to make us meet our fullest potential. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed be the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. A sword shall pierce your soul. Oh, my goodness. She had to live up to her fullest potential. Come on, Joseph. You're not just some little shepherd boy with your brothers. You're going to be a great one someday. The dream was sent for him to live up to his fullest potential. A lot of times what happens to us is we settle. We settle into what society has molded us into. They put us in this mold and they said, this is who you are. You ain't nothing but a hound dog, barking all the time. And they give you a name and a reputation and they put you in this little, this little box, this little pigeonhole. And you dare not come out of that pigeonhole that they have put you in. They put you in what is called a stereotype. They typecast you. You could only do buffoon movies where you act a fool. And you play the ignoramus, the dullard. But dreams are sent to inspire you to meet your fullest potential. That's why you have to dream. You have to dream. You have to dream so it clears away all of the cobwebs from your brain. You have to dream so it gets rid of all the fuzz and all the funk and all the mess in your head. You have to dream so that you can get a ticket 
and go to another country and get out of your family. Get away from your cousin, Puki and Shaquanda. Get away from your auntie and them uncles and none of you going anywhere. Everybody drunk, everybody wicked, everybody cussing, everybody broke, everybody begging and borrowing, booming and thumbing. Everybody, everybody poor, everybody poor, everybody raggedy and tore up, everybody. Nobody can help anybody. Everybody's eyes red from drinking a liquor oil in the morning. You got to get away from your family sometime in order to get a breakthrough. Dreams of self-disclosure and dreams of outside things, people, nations, and events. Those are two categories of dreams. Category number three, spirit sent dream. Spirit sent dream. And so you're gonna to have to discern the source of this spirit sent dream. The Holy Spirit sends a vast cross section of dream. And they are so vast that they're difficult to itemize. They're difficult to itemize them one by one, but we are going to we are going to discuss a few of them. Holy Spirit sent dream, Spirit sent dream. Spirit sent dream. Number one, dreams of destiny. In other words, the dream tells you how you are going to end up. And when I say end up, I'm not using end up in a negative connotation, I'm using end up in a positive way. You may have been the last man to come off the, the mark when the gun went off, but I see you standing in the middle podium with gold around your neck. So run for your life because it is your destiny to come out on top in this race. Destiny dream. We see an example of a destiny dream in the Old Testament with a young man named Joseph, whose father had made him a coat of many colors. The making of the coat of many colors was an indication to his other brothers that he was the beloved one above them all. It caused some jealousy among them and they fully intended to get rid of his sorry donkey because he was getting the, the best of everything, so they thought, and they could not see themselves uh, bowing down to him because that's what he dreamt. It was a dream of destiny. Your father and mother and brothers shall bow down to you. Now, it is interesting that his mother heard him talk about the dream, that she was going to bow down to him. But you know, we never hear of his mother in the story again, which would lead me to believe that somewhere along the line, his mother had died without seeing him as the big shot prime minister of a foreign country, selling grain, being the number one businessman, spoiling the economy of all the nations around him. His mother never lived to see the fulfillment of that dream. Don't let life kill you when you have a destiny dream. Stay alive. Tell death to take a hike. I'm dying now. I got things to see. My son has got to become the prime minister. Get out of here with your bony hand. Scram. Beat it. Out. Out. And don't come back, you hear? I got things to do. I got deals to make. I got people to meet. And a prime minister whose hand I must shake before I die. When you don't know what your destiny is, you're willing to give up and die earlier than you should. Everybody on earth is supposed to live to be 120 years. That's what God declares concerning man. When he told uh, Noah, when he was building the ark, he said, yet his days shall be 120 years. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Yet his days, the days of man, shall be 120 years. But we don't listen to what God said to Noah, we listen to what Job said about three score and 10. Destiny dreams, Joseph dreamt that they were going to bow to him. 
and he told the dream to his father and his father immediately understood what the dream meant. Imagine he was living in a household where it would seem like everybody had mastered the art of dream interpretation. His brothers knew what the dream meant. His mother knew what the dream meant. His father knew what the dream meant. He knew what the dream meant. They all had this great gift. So they had no reason to be jealous of him. They could dream too, but no. Sometimes we scandalize ourselves by telling people what our grand plans are and they're secretly jealous and they hope you crash and burn and you're so happy about your dream, you are unable to discern that people don't want to hear what you got to say. They don't want to hear you. Somebody else could tell them the same thing, they'll rejoice and clap, but you, whenever you have good news, it gets people upset, it gets them frustrated, it gets them angry. And they say to you, you again, they don't say to you out loud, but in their mind and their, their stink eyes that they look at you with that dangerous hate that they look at you with. And many times you're so innocent, you have no idea that these people hate your guts. Joseph was clueless, poor thing, clueless that his brothers couldn't stand him just because of his dream. People will hate you because of your dream. So make sure if you dream you own a house, make sure that the person you tell that they have four or five houses, two, three houses. Because if you tell a man who's renting that you dreamt yourself with a house, he's gonna start looking at you funny because he hasn't gotten one yet. Sometimes the best strategy is to keep your good news to yourself. Because when you tell the dream, it opens you up for the saboteurs who will come into your life and stay close so that they can sabotage what you're trying to do. Destiny dreams address your life, Joseph. You're going to be a big dog not too long in the future. Destiny dreams address your life. They give guidance. Your brother and father will bow down to you. Destiny dreams relate to your area of influence. You're going to be a ruler. You're going to be a leader. You're going to be in politics. You're going to be a prime minister, a president, a king. You're going to have a high vaunted position in the government or else nobody would need to bow down to you. Whatever you're going to do, my son, it will cause people to bow down to you, to pay obeisance, to pay respect to you. It relates, destiny dreams relate to your area of influence. They may speak to your past, Destiny dreams may speak to your past. Destiny dreams may also speak to your present or destiny dreams may speak of future issues. Dreams flow in these three areas, but destiny dreams unfold your life as it relates to God's plan. Destiny dreams unfold your life. It peels it away and shows you layer by layer, layer by layer where you're going and how you will end when you get there. Yes, yeah. Destiny dreams address three things. Write them down. Destiny dreams address, number one, where you are. Destiny dreams address, number two, where you were. Destiny dreams address number three, where you are headed. Glory be to God. So you and I have got to pay attention because dreams can be immediate, meaning coming to pass soon, 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 soon. Or coming to pass quickly, a part of it, then you get a pause, then things happen when they happen, they happen fast, then you get a pause, or they just happen one after the next, after the next, after the next, with no pause at all. 
but destiny dreams address where you are, where you were, and where you're headed. And you have to pay attention to destiny dreams because they can unfold and unfold very rapidly. And if you don't know what time it is, you can miss a major connection because you are not paying attention to your dreams. If there is any message that I want to give to you as I give you this message on, on dreams is that you have got, we have got, you and I have got to pay attention to our dream. Oh yeah. Another dream categorization is dreams that build up or dreams that edify you, that build you up or edify you. Life has a way of taking a toll on us. Sometimes it's stress, sometimes it's job related, sometimes it's relationship related, sometimes, many times it's money related, and it takes a toll on your mind, it takes a toll on your body, and the stress from it can be almost overpowering. You want to crawl into your bed and pull the sheets over your head and not come out for a week. But the reality is life goes on and so do you. You have to get on with your life. And ever so often, God will send a dream, thank him, thank him, thank him, that will build you up. These dreams that are sent to edify you will make you wake up feeling great. You wake up feeling great. You almost hurt yourself. You leap off the bed and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You wake up feeling great. You're inspired. Whatever the dream was, it raised your hope. It gives you some nerve, some verve, some pizzazz, unlimited. The dream drove away your discouragement. The, the dark cloud that was trying to come over you yesterday. In Genesis 28, there are two brothers, Jacob and Esau. <laughs> And uh, Jacob had robbed Esau of his birthright. And they hadn't seen each other for years and years and years. And then while he was in the desert traveling, he heard that his brother Esau was coming. Being guilty all the years of what he had done to his brother. Let me pause right there and take a drink to that. I'm going to tell you something. You see the people that have done you wrong. The people that have done you wrong. The people that have done you dirty. The people that have made you suffer. If you think that because you are done dirty and made to suffer, that you are the only one that suffered, let me explain something to you. Come near. Let me explain something to you. The one who inflicted the pain, they themselves are in pain. And sometimes after they inflicted the pain on you, their pain multiplied. And every time they hear about you, every time people talk about you, every time they think about you or dream about you, or hear that you're in the country, that you're somewhere, that guilt like acid starts eating at them again. That is why they have ulcerated stomach. That is why they have stomach burn. That is why they have problems with blood pressure. That is why they can't see their way. That is why they're melancholic, melancholy, sad, woe is me. What they did to you is eating them out. You must think of that. They try to put you in prison because they themselves are a prisoner. But dreams are sent to edify you. And so he was guilty all these years of robbing his brother. Some people have no conscience, so they don't feel any way guilty. They can do you in and then go on tomorrow and try to do you in again. They have no conscience. They are narcissistic people. And a lot of them move in church circles. 
So he thought, Jacob thought that his brother Esau was hunting for him and trying to come find him in the desert where he could kill him. Because remember, Esau was a hunter, mighty hunter before the Lord. So Jacob is alone. Jacob is terrified. He sends some of his wives over there. He sends some of his children over there. He sends some of his men over there. He sends some of his sheep over there. He gets together a little bribe and tells them, if you see my brother before me, give him this and tell him that I bow before him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to bribe his brother and solve his conscience with his petty little gift that he got. But Esau was not looking to him for him. Esau was not hunting for him. His own conscience was the hunter that plagued him for years. And when he was alone, he lay down on a rock and dreamed. And the angels of God were ascending. You would think the Bible would say descending and ascending. But no. Ascending and descending. There is so much preaching right there. But I'm going to leave well enough alone. Angels of God ascending and descending. He had companions that he did not know he had. He had support that he did not see with his naked eye. God was still thinking about him when he thought he was forgotten. He had access to the eternal God, our refuge. And God was letting him know, son, I got you. You have access to me and I see where you're at. I have access to you. My angel's army, they encamp round about you and they will deliver you from your brother Esau. But your brother is not hunting for you. You're not alone. Don't be terrified. God would give him promise of the land that he was sleeping on, that his father had made a covenant with God. God's promise was with him. He had companionship. God promised to prosper him. He was going to have success. When he was done with that dream, it changed the course of his life. When he met his brother, he hugged his brother's neck and the two of them wept. Every now and then you need an encouraging word, an encouraging dream, an encouraging vision. Somebody with a with a word to boost you up. This world is so full of takers and dismissers and rubbishers. Life will take a toll on you. Sometimes it's the people that are closest to you that tell you the most hurtful, acidic, painful things. Oh God, our help in ages past. Learn to be an encourager. Learn to have a good word for people. Learn to make people smile. Learn to make people laugh. Don't be a drag. When you come, lift up that human spirit that you're talking to. People need an encouraging word in this discouraging day. Look at what the world went through for the last couple of years. Look at the horror. Look at the death. I've never seen so many condolences in my 60 years on this planet. I've never seen so many deaths Never in my life have I seen people just go. And the thing is, you can't even go to the funeral. You can't even go. And if you do go, somebody is there. They're trying to accuse you of murder and everything else with that. <laughs> Dream categorization. Dreams that edify and build you up. May God send you booster dreams. Build or upper dream. In the name of Jesus, go to bed and dream, edifying dream. And then under the heading of dream categorization, dreams that exhort, they are unveiling a sense of urgency. These dreams are challenging us to take action. These dreams are sent by God to, to stir our faith, to fan our fire. Oh, rock a shocker, rock a shocker. These dreams make us want to do something, make us want to, to be something, make us want to run through a troop and leap over a wall. 
these kinds of dreams reveal accurate, specific pictures of what is happening behind the veil in the demonic world and in the world and realm of the angelic. This kind of dream challenges action, challenges us to take courage, challenges us to act, challenges us to get up, get on up, to be on the scene like a kingdom machine. Yes, dream categorization. Those are dreams that exhort, dreams that build up. Uh-huh, destiny dreams. Yes, and then dreams of comfort. They are sent to heal our emotion. They are sent to heal our frazzled, razzled, dazzled memory. They are sent like the balm of Gilead. It is time for us to reevaluate. It's time for a reevaluation. Not everyone is out to get you. Are you feeling me now? Not everyone is out to get me. There are more people who are out to see me succeed than those who are out to get me. Those who are out to get me are, I can count them on one hand, but those who are out to help me get to where I have to get to, I don't have hands and toes to come. Now, you don't feel like that every day, but that's the reality. That is the truth. That people are more out to help than they are out to hurt. I know you don't feel like that because those who are against you are evangelistic, they are loud, they are bold and bodacious, they are all up in your Kool-Aid and they don't know your flavor. They are all up in your drinks, they are all up in your, in your, in your home, they are all up in your job, they are all up in your friends list. They're talking to everybody they can meet about you spreading the bad news. And then some people believe and they call to ask, what happened? How this person saying this? When did it happen? There's a truth in every lie. Yeah, yeah. And other people call and said, I met a madman today. He was telling me this and this. Don't worry that joker. He's looking to get some popularity and get some fame. He's not as famous as you. He's not as blessed as you. He doesn't have the, the clout that you have. He doesn't have the impact that you have. Don't worry with that guy. He's looking to get famous off of you. Leave him alone. Don't bother with him. You keep doing what you're doing. You hear? I want to send you a word of encouragement. I said, well, don't only send words, send blessings too. <laughs> oh, rocker, shocker, rocker, shocker. Dreams of comfort. Not everyone is out to get you. And this kind of dream, dreams of comfort, they give you a very healthy view, a heavenly view of yourself. Hmm. They release assurance. They give you God's perspective so that you can heal quicker. Hey, 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 hey. They help us to love God better. To love self better. We are not the CEO of the universe. <laughs> Some people behave like they're little Jesus. You know, they died for the world and they want to fix everything. You can't fix everything. So leave it alone. Give people a break. Don't be so tight. Don't be so critical and judgy, judgmental. Are you there? Glory to God. I was mourning a few years back. I was mourning. My wife and I had lost two children. And there was one, the first one, that really came back to me. And that day I was depressed. I was depressed. I didn't feel like getting up from the bed. I didn't feel like doing anything. I didn't want nobody to talk to me. I was depressed. I was thinking because it was around that time. And I was thinking this child would be eight years by now. And it'd be, I wonder what he would look like. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going through, going through, going through. And I felt this truck come on top of my head, on top of my back. My body was stiff. Man, 
I pulled the cover over my head and I tried to go back to sleep. I was depressed. I was out of it. The memories, the emotion, the, the condition, the circumstances that happened at the time when we lost this child. And then while I'm in this dark place, I fell asleep. And as soon as I fell asleep, my spirit went up to the, the flooring over my head, the wall over my head, the roof over my head, and it looked down at my body lying on the bed. And then whoosh, it's like a vacuum just sucked it up. And I left the... Uh, I left the raggedy body on the bed and I was gone. I was moving fast, traveling fast. And by the time I could blink, I was standing on the outside of a city. And the lights in the city, I did not go into the city. I could see it from a distance. The light in the city was bright, but it was soft on the eyes. You know, on earth here, Sometimes the sun makes you squint and you knit up your brow because the light is too bright, it's hurting your eyes. This light was bright, but it wasn't hurting your eyes. It was soft. And then all of a sudden, this boy came running through the streets of the city and he came to a part where there were flowers growing and he stood up and watched me at a distance and I turned and watched him and the spirit of the Lord said, that's your son, we got him. And I looked at him and he looked like a cross between his eldest brother and the second one, second brother. He was, he looked like both of them, but he had his own features. And his hair were, were three, four inches long and curly. And he looked at me like, he didn't know who I was. And I looked at him and the voice said, it wasn't an audible voice either. That's your boy, we got him. And he looked at me again a second time and turned and took off running back into the city. And then whoosh. <laughs> I came through the roof, man, and went back into this skeletal thing. It wasn't skeletal, but that's what it looked like. You know, we have a lot of pride about our appearance and yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm telling you, I know what the scripture means when it says, what is man that God's mind is full of him? You're mindful of him. God's mind is full of me. Well, there you go showing off yourself again. No, he's mindful of me. His mind is full of me. When God wakes up, his mind is full of me. You got to talk for yourself. <laughs> The angels ask that question. What is man that, that God is mindful of him and the son of man that he visits him? These little scrawny creatures, what is man? What is really man? As I'm coming down and as I get into the house and I'm looking at that, that uh, body on the, on the bed there, I'm thinking to myself, what is man? Anyway, my spirit entered into my body again. The body without the spirit is really dead indeed. And I got up, I made up my bed, I went and brushed my teeth, and uh, I was a happy camper for the rest of that month. All of the darkness went, all of the depression went, all of the sorrow went, all of the frazzled, fried mind, all of that went, I don't know where it went, but it was a time for me to reevaluate. So, wow, imagine that. God has got this child that I'm worried about. I couldn't be doing a better job than what God would do. He looked real healthy, radiant, and he could run. God wants to heal us much quicker. We are not the CEO of the universe. Everybody is not out to get us. Everybody is not out to get us. 
Everybody is not out to get you. And then there are dreams of character issues that you know your life needs examination and change. Dreams that bring to bear character issues. It's talking to you about you. Heart issues, repentance issues, truth issues, lying issues, mistreatment of people issues, dishonesty issues. And you need to face the issue before you can move on. Most people get stuck because of a refusal to do what they're told in the dream. But God will give no new instruction until the old instruction has been obeyed. If you didn't do what the last dream was sent to tell you to do, you're not going to have any new dream to tell you to do something different. you got to obey. The place of disobedience is a place where growth ceases and the voice of God stops talking to you. You did not obey the last command that he gave you. Why should he give you more? Are you feeling the feeling? Now, this is not about uh, condemnation. It's not sent to offend, but to inspire change. But those of us who are mature, we can grasp this concept. These kinds of dreams that bring to us character issues, they rattle us. They rattle your bones, rattle your cages, rattle your teeth, and they get you unsettled. The Holy Spirit convicts and convinces. Satan is the one who condemns, but the Holy Spirit convicts and convinces. And these dreams of character issues are sent to provoke, to stir. They get us angry because we hate correction. We hate being told what to do, even by God. And God wants to mature us. But the carnal man, the flesh man, wants to remain in the mess. And God is using dreams of correction, dreams of correction to perfect us. We are being pursued by God. He's not going to allow us to stay in the funk, to stay in the mess. As much as you love your children, there are times you have to correct them. And correction is always painful. You don't want to correct them. But if you let them be this nasty way, they're going to grow up in a nasty world. And that world is unforgiving. Somebody may take their life if they keep with this particular kind of behavior. And so you've got to deal with it now. You've got to bend the tree while it is soft. Hey, 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 hey. Sometimes when I bend the tree, my wife is say, oh, are you too harsh on him? Say, yeah. I am a man. I've got to prepare him to be a man. And this world is not nice to men. I've got to prepare him for that world. You can be nice to him all you want to. But you are their mother. You do the mothering and let a brother do what mothers don't do, the fathering. And then finally, directive dreams. These are prophetic in nature. They give us, the word says, direction. The wise men were told in the dream, do not go back to Herod. Joseph was told in a dream, take the baby to Egypt. This prompted them to choose an alternative route home. And they ultimately served to get us to a higher spiritual dimension. Directive dreams are always sent to bring us into the more, to give us higher spiritual dimension. They get us further down the road towards fulfilling what we are here to do, our purpose. And they guide us and help us to avoid traps along the way. Directive dream. It has been a joy teaching this subject tonight. It's been a joy. What do dreams mean? Is it just a waste of time? No, it's not. May the Lord grant you understanding. New York, New York. Dominion Ministries, New York. That's where we are coming from. We're glad to have you with us today. We give God the praise to Apostle Gaspar. And we thank God for the program that she's doing in the mornings. The word is working for me. At 9 o'clock, Monday to Friday. And we look forward to having you listen to these brilliant, godly people that she has coming. Uh, to share their experiences and to bring words onto us. Each one has a part that they play. We don't have all the parts. And they play their part, they do their role, and we play our part, we play our role. We thank God for her, and we thank God for the blessing that that program has been to the nations of the world.
Let me pray a blessing on you right now. Father, I release an impartation of supernatural power and I speak a word of blessing. I speak a word of favor. I speak a word to download, to impart the grace, the supernatural power that works in the apostolic rod. I lay it upon the heads of the people that are praying with us right now. And I declare that breakthrough anointing is released on them, that large and effectual doors are open to them, and they'll be able to discern the voice of God from the voice of the satanic world and walk through. I declare that they shall become more than they have ever been to the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you for your time. God bless. Have a good one, everybody.